Oh, what's up guys? Gun here. I hope this video finds you well. Happy Monday, May 24, 2021. It's been a little bit since we've been able to put up some consistent content here on the channel. It's been a real I honestly I thought this little this little uh couple week gap here would be not as busy as it has been for me, but it's been really doggone busy. So I definitely appreciate you guys uh, um, being patient with content on this channel, but most of you guys have been catching me um, on the Osmo channel. Uh, I'll be back on the Osmo channel this Thursday uh, and I believe Friday and Saturday. Uh, and then, of course, we have uh, daily cut. We've been having daily coverage in the VIP at RunDFS.com every day. So no matter what... Um, free content we put out we always have the the premium stuff there so have no fear today we're going to chop up the six game mlb slate for fandle and DraftKings. there's also a two game nba slate tonight uh, i'm going to try and have some projections and up uh, for that as well in the premium side if you guys do want to catch the premium side of things unlock access to the spreadsheets mlb and basketball you can go to run dfs.com make yourself an account get signed up uh, and grab a week pass uh, during normal uh, days. I do hang out in the RunDFS.com VIP Discord voice chat uh, for the couple hours before uh, lock. Uh, sometimes um, I can't catch like the final hour if I'm on a live before lock show on, on Osmo channel. And then, of course, Sundays we take the day off. So if you guys want to uh, dip your toes into the, the premium Discord, hang out with us uh, it's a fun time. Should be a lot of exciting sports this week. And tonight, pretty uh, medium-sized slate to uh, swim around in on the baseball side of things. This video brought to you by Prize Picks. PrizePicks.com. If you guys uh, want to uh, diversify your daily spend when it comes to fantasy sports and uh, better reward your research uh, individually, I definitely think Prize Picks is something you should check out. Uh, I love it. It's kind of like prop betting meets uh, uh, DFS without the uh the, the the having the shop the best price all that good stuff it's 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 parlaying meet prop betting meet dfs and it's really really fun give an idea they have uh nba uh projections up tonight and it's up to you guys to decide whether or not you think player x will score uh less than or greater than the fantasy point that they um project oh, and then they also have single stats so if you guys are just Thinking about how many real points a player will score, how many rebounds, how many assists, how many times they'll chuck a three. Um, definitely uh, look at isolating those uh, stats and taking the over-under. Uh, again, this is a, a, another way to reward your research. Uh, you can't always play Bam out of bio uh, in DFS, but if you look at that uh, matchup and you and you found yourself a, a, a bet you like, maybe go and bet it, isolate it on Price Picks. A lot of fun. They also have baseball. They have first half, second half. I definitely think the 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 playoffs is an incredible time to. Uh, get into some props and maybe attack the projection models that a lot of these uh, prop systems put out because uh, the playoffs do uh, pump up minutes a lot more, right? You start seeing 10-man rotations go to like 7, 8-man, uh, even 6-man. It's, it's a lot of 38-plus minutes played from some of these starters. So uh, a little extra opportunity to go get those points. And then, you know, a team like the Bucks, known for blowing out teams, you don't let your foot off the gas as easy uh, in the in the postseason. Obviously, I'm not saying they're going to blow out the, the heat here, but just an example. You're going to get your full minutes out of these guys. So does make uh, attacking props a little bit more fun. Uh, like I said, baseball up as well. Uh, as of this uh, moment, we do not have the strikeout props uh, up yet, but we do have the fantasy projections, but I do like taking advantage of the strikeout props as well. So go check out Price Picks. Um, if you sign up using code Gundacker, you see it on the screen here. They're going to match your initial deposit up to 100 bucks. So sign up, drop 20 bucks. They're going to turn that into 40 Sign up, drop a hundred bucks. They're going to turn that into two hundred bucks, uh, and it's a uh, like I said, they're a sponsor on the channel, sponsor me, and it helps me out as well. So we both get a little something in return. Let's talk baseball. Six games tonight, kind of a travel day for much of the league. Uh, really fun weekend, really fun time to be a Yankee fan, uh, and it's an odd time for baseball, right? The the dead ball era. We're seeing a lot of. Um, 
pitch pitching heavy uh, games. We're seeing uh, uh, you guys have heard about the no hitters, and then we've also seen a couple like. Um, Big games, right? Jesse Winker, massive weekend. Five homers. He had three homers in a game. A couple double dongs over the weekend. Uh, the Braves dropped 20 runs the other day. So while we are seeing the dead ball maybe um, create uh, a less offensive game, we're still seeing teams able to thrive and get through. So cream rises to the top. Six games tonight. Let's get started. 7, 10 p.m. Eastern. The Colorado Rockies taking their talents to City Field. Uh, Mets hosting the Rockies. Austin Gomber, and it looks like David Peterson pitching for the Mets right now. Uh, some sites that I referenced before I punched these names into the spreadsheet um, did not list a starter for the Mets. So kind of keep an eye on that if you're taking notes. Asterisk next to uh, David Peterson. Early implied run totals for this one. 3.3 on the Rockies. 3.8 on the Mets. Extremely low run projection. So both pitchers uh, would probably enter the conversation, though I'm way more intrigued by the thought of David Peterson. Peterson on draft Kings is listed at 7K. Uh, so on this slate, I kind of just want to throw guys that I think can get to 20 DKP or greater in the mix. And I do think David Peterson is one of those guys. At Atlanta, just 4.2 innings. Uh, didn't go great. Just an out away from you know being on the hook for maybe uh, being competitive for the win or not. Six ground balls, one fly ball. Uh, but yet he gave up three earnings. So I, I would imagine there's a little bit of uh, unluckiness to go uh, into that one. And the way I like to... Um uh, confirm or deny that is I'll go to fan graphs. I'll pull up David Peterson's car and I go check out the uh, game log for that one. And then I'll see what X Fip and Sierra says um, per, uh, per the game here. So we'll go game log on fan graphs, pull that up, but just kind of like reading between the tea leaves. It looks like you got extremely unlucky being that I only had one ball leave the uh, uh, ground, right? Uh, so a 2.67 uh, X Fip 2.0. 2.29 FIP, but, but yet he has a 5.79 ERA, leaving that game with a 385 BABIP. So, looks like that was a little case of that's baseball. Um, I'm willing to forgive and forget, move on. The Rockies uh, are definitely a team that have been Jekyll and Hyde uh, home and on the road. Coors Field versus not Coors Field so far this season on the road. Slugging just 300 as a team, an under 100 ISO, and a 27.5% K rate. Peterson definitely one of my favorite plays on the surface right now. Sierra and XFIP looking just fine. 3.43 Sierra, 3.13 XFIP, and 12.3% swing and strike rate as a ground ball guy. There's really no reason for for me to get away from him here uh would like to see the, the the six innings there make him a little bit more fanduel viable as well uh but no doubt in my mind i'm gonna have a big chunk of peterson on DraftKings. if i wanted to take a stab against uh peterson you know maybe we chip in a chair a trevor story or cj crone somebody like that uh but i'm really gonna be leaning way more on the peterson side austin gomber uh, so far this season, season does allow some power to righties, a 1.47 home run per nine. The Mets, however, have not been a high-octane offense, slugging under 400 against lefties so far, uh, a 128 ISO, a 24% K rate. I could cherry-pick a couple of these guys here. Jonathan VR, he's been in that leadoff spot lately, I guess, waiting for the return of uh, like guys like Jeff McNeil, Michael Conforto. Um, I do like... VR a little bit. He does have some pop, but it's more so from the other side of the plate. Uh, but if he can get on base, um, I do like his propensity to uh, steal bags. So a little power, a little stolen base potential. I don't mind throwing him in the player pool. Francisco Lindor, you guys know the story, the struggles he's had so far this season. Looks like he's going to project a little bit better on FanDuel versus DraftKings based on a sub 3K price on FanDuel versus nearly 5K on DraftKings. Mets also picking up journeyman Cameron Maben, former Yankee great, 100 bucks above min price. I don't mind uh, taking a stab at that if I had to. And then, uh, you know, the rest of this lineup gets pretty pretty um ugly so we're not going to expect a lot of runs here uh in this game so i'm not going to commit to full stacking but i will cherry pick a couple names and i'm definitely going to load up on uh david peterson moving on to the next game here cleveland indians at the detroit tigers i have sam hentikis 
taking on Spencer Turnbull. Turnbull coming off a no-hitter. And Henkis, I only got 15 innings of sample size for him so far this season. Uh, and that uh, sample size has not been uh, great. Looking at his uh, recent game log, just want to see what kind of uh, pitch count we're going to be dealing with. 50, 80, 60. So might get three to five innings out of him if he's uh, average. And if he's not, he's uh, likely not going to... Um, Lasts very long, and then it turns into a full bullpen game. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be considering Henkis as a play. Uh, has not shown strikeout ability, just the 8.2% swing and strike rate. Spencer Turnbull, I don't think that no hitters is a common range of outcome for him, but a little bit of fate, I guess, to face the Mariners, who have allowed two no-hitters uh, this season, now facing the Indians, who have allowed two no-hitters, so uh, would be a, a, a quite a coincidental um, a curtain call if he was able to um, follow up that, that Mariners game with a big game here. Against lefties, just a 20.5% K rate, it's going to be a lefty-heavy lineup uh, with a lot of switch hitters in the top half. Uh, he's not a big strikeout guy, 11.1% Swing and strike rate, uh, meaning he's not a pure contact guy, but he's not somebody that's a, a lead strikeout artist. He's going to, going to throw strikes, a, a sub one whip, a sub six percent walk uh, rate thus far. So uh, what that tells me is he's not going to waste a lot of pitches. Which um, you know, if you get ninety to one hundred bullets to throw, uh, you could probably eat some innings rather quickly. So uh, if you if you're not a believer in the Indians, and there's really only a few players on the Indians, I'm, I'm overly concerned with anyway. Jose Ramirez, guys like that. Um, sure, maybe Turnbull's in the conversation as an SP2. I still think I prefer David Peterson a little bit uh, more on the forefront, uh, but I definitely think Turnbull's a guy that can go deep into a game and maybe sneak into a 20-plus uh, DKP. But I would say the last two games are a little bit more on the higher end uh, range of outcomes in Turnbull's fantasy career. Uh, but I do think because of this matchup and because of his uh, uh, makeup, I could... I could see myself getting to some Turnbull exposure, uh, but I'm definitely going to taper my expectations and not expect him to uh, get that close to what he put up last uh, game. His previous two seasons, body of work, a Sierra floating at 4.6 or greater and an XFIP at 4.5 or greater. Uh, so that's kind of the regression we're looking to see, right? I don't think he's going to be a bad pitcher. I don't think he's going to be an ace by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, if I wanted to pick on him, he'd... He's a big ground ball guy, so there's not a whole lot that I want to attack on him anyway. It's just a matter of does he have a lot of fantasy upside. Clearly, he can go deep, and I think that's his upside. It's going deep in the games, eating those innings, and then hopefully being on the hook for the win. Uh, Tigers, implied run total 4.5. Indians, 4.1, so Tigers are favorited here. Henkis has not been great. Uh, has a lot, a lot of power to both sides of the plate, and so far an over 40% hard contact rate. Two righties. This Tigers lineup not going to uh, captivate us by any stretch of the imagination, but still some power and a lot of guys that do bat near 3 300 since the beginning of the last season. Uh, if I'm digging out some power, Jonathan Scope slugging almost 500 with a 42.2% hard contact rate against lefties since the beginning of the last season. Miguel Cabrera has shown some pop lately, over 400 Woba and slugging 540 against lefties since the beginning of the last season. Uh, Eric Hayes, short sample size on him, but he's going to be one of the higher guys in the bomb detector, a 4.61 bomb rating right now. Um, and I do like chipping and sharing his uh, price point if he does cast that lineup today. Uh, and then Wilson Ramos, same guy. So I do like the Tigers to... I, I might even get to him as like a sub stack. Uh, it's hard to trust the Tigers offense long term, but I do think this this might be an opportunity for them to turn some heads and surprise some people tonight. So give me some Tigers exposure. Give me some, a little bit of Turnbull. And just uh, probably just activating the uh, skilled Indians, right? The Eddie Rosarios, Jose Ramirez, guys like that that I know historically do have some talent. I'm not going to be too enthralled with the bottom half. They have been hit with some injuries. I think Fran Reyes recently got uh, put on the IL for them. Team's looking 
team's looking rough. They're down bad. So uh, just give me the, the normal guys at the top. Not going to commit to a stack. Uh, I will take some Tigers bats. Moving on to the next game here. Blake Snell taking on Brandon Woodruff. A battle of potential aces. I do think you Darvis is the Padres ace. But Brandon Woodruff, likely the Brewers ace. Brewers have plenty of uh, really, really good pitching. Corbin Burns and Freddie Peralta are really, really good. You can make a case Burns versus Woodruff. Uh, but I'd probably put Woodruff on the top right now. 158 ERA so far this season. 57 innings of sample size. 13.2% swinging strike rate. He has been good. Padres coming off a really, really successful weekend. And they haven't lost a game since the Nixon administration. Man, they are on fire. So uh, the return of Fernando Tatis has been pretty successful for them. However, they have been uh, a little bit of uh, two steps forward, one step backwards. Manny Machado going down with an injury. And it looks like uh, that's going to be expecting him to be missing more time before he's back. So I'm not going to speculate him being back until we actually see him in a lineup. And either way, I think this is going to be a game that projects a little bit more pitcher friendly uh, than offense friendly. I'm looking at an implied run total of three and a half for both teams right now. So it's really not a whole lot to go out there and attack. So just give me a little bit of the, uh, or give me a lot of both pitchers here. More Woodruff, obviously 10.6K on DraftKings, 10.7K on FanDuel. We're looking for six innings plus if we can get it. And hopefully a strikeout per inning, if not more. Um, obviously, I think the Padres do strike some fear in a lot of um, uh, casual players. But I do think there are they are an attackable spot. 7.2 innings out of Woodruff in his last two outings. Six plus innings uh, as far as the eye can see outside of the April 1st game against the Twins. And a lot of 30 plus DKP. So uh, not at all... Um, tentative about rostering Woodruff today. Looking at this projected Padres lineup, the top three guys, Tommy Pham, Jerickson, Profar, and Jake Cronenworth all have sub 20% K rates against righties. But past that, it's a lot of 22, one and fours, one and fives, and then of course the pitcher spot. So I'm not overly concerned about the uh, blow up potential for the Padres against uh, Woodruff. Blake Snell, 8.9K on DraftKings. The story of Blake Snell this season has been his lease. How long will he go before he gets yanked? There hasn't been a lot of games where he's gone six innings. Matter of fact, there's been just one. His most recent game against the aforementioned Colorado Rockies. Or Rockies on the road against a lefty. It was a really, really great spot for Blake Snell every which way you cut it. Is this spot as good? Not as good, uh, but definitely a spot where Blake Snell can build on that performance last time out. He went 97 pitches. I believe that's a season high, yes. Um, so it's at least encouraging to see that he does have the ability to go six innings. And maybe uh, his skipper allows him to, to stay out there. I like the sub 9K price tag. I like the potential getting 20 plus DKP. Perhaps putting both pitchers in that same DraftKings lineup. Throwing a blanket over the dub. Maybe combine for 22 plus strikeouts. And um, and limit the damage. Uh, with that said, looking at this Brewers lineup, they did get Christian Yelich back in the mix. He's going to be uh, a guy that uh, helps this lineup exponentially. Lorenzo Cain against a lefty. You know, he's not the same guy he once was, but maybe he once was as good as he once was. I'm not a rapper. 13.9% swinging uh, K percentage on Col uh, Colton Wong. 16% on Lorenzo Cain, but past that, it's a lot of 22% or greater against lefties. So plenty of strikeout potential in this lineup. We go pull out that pitch report. Compliments of the RunDFS.com MLB VIP spreadsheet. If you guys want access to this, I love this tab. I think it's a pretty underrated um part of your research and you know this is a, a thing that if you go to fan graphs and and try to isolate every pitcher every team it, it could take forever but this tab right here it uh, extracts all the information very conveniently and you can look at it so as an example, Blake Snell is going to throw a fastball about 48% of the time, 95 miles an hour is his average uh, velocity, and that fastball has actually been negatively graded on a uh, curve, so a linear scale, zero being league average, plus uh, a positive number being 
uh, a plus pitch and negative being a negative pitch. His fastball has not been great to him, but his slider has, his curveball has, and that's kind of what you're looking to, to you know get ahead in the count with your fastball and then lean on those secondary pitches. Not a lot of fastball crushers on this uh, uh, Brewers team. Christian Yelich would be one of them. Colton Wong, one of them. But past that, just Willie Adamas, uh, former teammate of Blake Snell. Uh, and then it's a, a lot of negative grades for the Brewers. So I definitely think Blake Snell has... Uh, the opportunity to have a great game here. Just uh, Christian Yelich and Manny Pena slug over 500 against lefties. Um, so I might be cherry picking, you know, a couple of one offs here and there. Obviously, Tatis is a, a guy that will make my player pull. Uh, maybe Tommy Pham, if he's at the leadoff spot, can swipe a bag if he gets on. Uh, but I don't think I'm going to be committed to stacking either team. And I'm going to be pretty heavily invested in Brandon Woodruff. And I'm going to have Blake Snell, but obviously the exposure number that I place on Blake Snell is going to be something I meditate on throughout the day because there are some uh, wild cards. So uh, I, I, one, I'm going to wait for the Brewers confirm lineup to maybe feel a little bit better and two, you know, just kind of see where the field is at versus where uh, I think Blake Snell uh, is worth being. I think on DraftKings, I'm going to be on him no matter what because I think five plus innings, but obviously on FanDuel, I do value that quality start and win. Uh, and neither one of those is a given in this matchup, right? Uh, and the more the quality start more so being the the fear that maybe doesn't go six innings. Let's move on to the next game: Orioles at the Twins. John means business up against Matt Shoemaker. Orioles four and a half implied run total. Twins four point six. Not a lot of high run total so far on this slate. We got temps in the mid seventies. And it looks like no weather concerns either for throughout the slate as well. John means 10.2K on DraftKings, 9.1K on uh, Fandle. The Twins have actually been pretty decent against lefties. Almost a 190 ISO against lefties so far this season with... Um, with a 757 OPS. So, Nelson Cruz... Uh, Josh Donaldson, Mitch Garver, these are all bats that I definitely think can uh, give a headache to lefties. Miguel Sano has been red hot in the last couple of uh, games as well. So I definitely think this is one of those play, walk the the uh, the tightrope spots for me where I'm going to play both sides of the fence. I'm going to have some twins exposure, uh, but I probably wouldn't have 0% John Means, 10.2K. I definitely think you know that's money I'd rather have and maybe um, the Brandon Woodruffs, maybe the uh, upcoming Lance Lynn or something like that. But I'm still going to have a little bit of Means just because I think the slate has a lot of range of outcomes, and I think most of the range of outcomes favor the pitcher, and I just think those um, points will be pretty lucrative. So if Means is one of the top two scoring pitchers, even if it's by five, six points, that can mean a lot at the top of a tournament. Uh, Matt Shoemaker, so far this season, not striking people out. Uh, 10.5% swing and strike rate, but the K percent, it's 13.5% to lefty so far, 14.4% uh, K percentage to righty so far. Uh, is he due for progressing to get closer to last year's numbers? Well, if he can up that swing and strike rate a little bit, sure. Uh, but in, until I see it, I'm going to have to doubt it. A 1.45 whip. Is this the best spot for a stack so far against a pitcher? Um maybe uh, I do think the the Tigers have a case here but the Orioles right not a fun uh, not a fun lineup to, to to load up on but I do think Matt Shoemaker can be leaky and he has probably the uh, so far, the greatest home run allowed potential uh, since the beginning of last season over a two home run per night to both sides of the plate and the Orioles could get a little sneaky here with some power. Trey Mancini, Anthony Santander, right there in the thick of things. Santander has been banked clean up. He's been really, really cheap. Um, Ryan Mac Mountcastle um, got into one over the weekend. Uh, maybe even some Austin Hayes. So not fun names to click, right, by any stretch. But definitely an exploitable matchup. Shoemaker so certainly somebody that um, is not great. So I do like some Orioles exposure here. Uh, and I, like I said, I'm going to play Twins. But it's more so the fact that I like some of these Twins just against left-handed pitching versus the fact that I think John Means is bad. I think John's, John Means is easily, um, you know, probably a top five pitcher in the uh, AL East, uh, and he might be one of the better left-handed pitchers in a league. Just thinking off the top of my head, there's like Carlos Rodon, Clayton Kershaw, um, 
yeah, John Means might be a top five lefty in the league right now. So uh, I don't mind. I definitely don't mind play, playing both sides of that fence. That's kind of the approach I'll be taking. Uh, means somebody that is definitely graded a lot lower for me just because I don't trust her offense more often than not. And this, I do think it's a tough matchup. So I'm going to have means, but it's not going to be a, a high confidence and a high exposure level. Uh, if I wanted to, to uh, project a homer against John Means here, uh, I think Nelson Cruz might be the guy He's slugging 750 plus since the beginning of last year against lefties. Uh, and John Means definitely somebody uh, that can give up a homer to, to righties, a 1.21 homer per nine so far this season against righties. Uh, and then it bleeds into the near two pluses from last or almost three last year. Uh, and the strength of schedule so far for Means has been pretty solid. I think uh, should Cruz crack that lineup here, he's definitely going to be one of the more menacing bats to try and get out. Uh, quick, quick peek at the pitch report for John Means: fastball, uh, curveball, changeup. Nelson Cruz crushes all three of those pitches. Um, slider, not so much. So maybe he'll lean on the slider a little bit more in this spot. But that's not a, a pitch that he. That's his least used pitch. Uh, and Nelson Cruz a two plus. Uh, Great against the fastball, the curveball, and nearly a two against the changeup. So, game is some Nelly for Tato Cruz because he's like a bird. Uh, let's make sure he's in the lineup, right? Uh, White Sox hosting the Cardinals. Lance Lynn hosting Quang Hun Kim. Lance Lynn and uh, Lucas Giolito did not catch the Yankees series over the weekend. And I don't, <laughs> I don't hate him for it. But Lance Lynn, 9.3K on DraftKings, 10K on FanDuel, uh, in a plus matchup, I think, against the Cardinals. Uh, there are three bats in this projected lineup that do bat or strike out under 20% against righties. Uh, however, there are a plethora of bats that strike out almost 30% against righties to kind of offset that. Cardinals are playing in the AL Park, so they're going to pick up the designated hitter. But they don't really have a lot of power hitting um, to kind of fill that position out. So uh, my guess would be maybe they give one of their better players, you know, a day off their feet. I don't know if a Goldie or Arenado, you kind of want both of their uh, gloves in the mix here. Maybe even Yachty catches, right? Um, but I, 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 I'm I, not uh, I'm not too worried about that line of getting beefed up. So give me some Lance Lynn. Lance Lynn, 11.3% swing and strike rate so far this season. Right in line where he's been the last season. Um, just a little bit lower than he was in 2019. Sierra and XFIP under four. The ERA, one and a half. So maybe his ERA is outperforming his advanced metrics. But we know uh, Lance Lynn has the ability to eat a lot of innings, go seven strong, and uh, likely get us a shot at a uh, strikeout per inning. I think Lance Lynn, the Lance Lynn, I think he used to play for the, the Cardinals. So uh, a little un, <laughs> un, uh, unimportant revenge narrative, right? Uh, at 9.3K, again, any pitcher on this slate that I think could give me 20-plus, I'm going to put in the mix. I do think Lance Lynn's easily one of those pitchers. Last outing against Minnesota, under 10 DKP, two strikeouts, 109 pitches. So was not getting the strikeouts he just wasn't feeling it but it was one of those spots where he had back-to-back -back starts against the same team that's always a tough um tough ask one thing i do like about uh that outing even though it was a loss he did throw almost 110 pitches so he's averaging 110 pitches in the last two games so uh, that many bullets man you could fire away and hopefully you know if you're throwing some clean innings you get to seven plus innings maybe a shot at a plus and the way baseball's been going this year uh he does have a shot at a cg we've seen him do it this season so uh, i'm gonna have lance lynn in the mix if i wanted to pick on lance lynn He's been giving up some power to righties, a 1.25 home run per nine to righties this season, 1.19 last season, 1.29 the season per four. Uh, so maybe a Goldie or an Arenado would be somebody to look at. I think Arenado is the most intriguing for me simply because he has the lowest strikeout rate. So if you're going to have a guy that strikes out righties at 33%, but he does allow power when he's not striking them out, it looks like Arenado is the guy, right? Strikes out a low percentage of the time, but... Um, has some pop. So I think that's the, the match made in heaven here. And then Kim, on the other hand, 11% 11 swing and strike rate with a 3.78 XFIP, a 3.96 Sierra, ERA under three. So ERA is looking a little bit opposite here of his advanced metrics. Maybe he's due for some regression as well. And uh, if I wanted to pick on him, it looks like... It looks like I don't really... Uh, I, I guess his ground ball rate to righties is a little low. So he does have a... 
Um, she's he walks a lot. Eighteen percent walk rate to both sides of the plate, and that could create the big inning a one point two nine WHIP. Um, so that's probably where I would be uh, attacking. I I don't know, just some patient hitters here. So, uh, I Nick Madrigal with 1.6% K rate. Maybe he draws a walk here, creates some traffic on the bases for a guy like Jose Abreu, your Mercedes. Um, White Sox against a lefty. I know Jordan Montgomery went ham against him over the weekend in Yankee Stadium. I was not expecting that. This has been a White Sox team that, outside of that game against Montgomery, had just... One, they don't lose to lefties, and two, they usually just destroy lefties. Batting 284 against lefties so far this season, a 180 ISO, and this dips back all the way to the beginning of the last season. They were just a team that showed up, arrive, smash lefties, and leave. And I think this is a good get right spot for them. Um, had a, a Sunday night to think about getting swept by the Yankees, and they look to get right here. So even though Kim's uh, metrics aren't really saying he's the gas can, uh, I do think I'm going to bank on the White Sox versus lefties a little bit uh, more so than the matchup. And it's also because this slate doesn't give me a whole lot to work with, right? I don't have one single team right now uh, projected at five runs or greater, and the highest implied run total I got right now is the White Sox. So uh, it should be pitcher uh, friendly. Um, so give me some Lance Lynn. I, I don't really need a reason to get to Kim here. Um, I just don't. I, I just so many pitching options, and I think the White Sox are going to be the, the, the toughest task to ask uh, for any pitcher to, uh, any lefty to, to get to today. So give me the White Sox stack. Don't give me any Kim, and maybe a couple of the righties, Goldie, Arenado, even Yadi Molina, a little, little uh, uh, power this season. Uh, against Lance Lynn, but also give me a, a good chunk of Lance Lynn. Lastly, main event tonight, the Athletics hosting the Seattle Mariners. Before we do that, take a pause for the cause. Let you guys know if you guys want to hang out with me for the couple hours before lock. I'll be hanging out. You'll have access to the RunDFS.com VIP spreadsheet throughout the duration of the day, uh, including access to my player pool. I'll be dressing up my favorite stacks, what I'm going to do with my pitching, um, and uh, guys in my player pool at each position. If you guys want to bounce your pool against mine or just want to tail mine or whatever it is, uh, it's accessible. Uh, premium perk, having a subscription at Run DFS. Com. And, of course, we'll also play some NBA tonight, just two games on the docket uh, and spread out pretty evenly. So go to RunDFS.com, make sure you have an account, get signed up. Love to chat with you. Get in that RunDFS.com Discord. Can't stress that enough. If you sign up for VIP, absolutely jump in the Discord. Take full advantage. We're kind of in the, the lull season, right, the, that um, little summer time before uh, football comes back uh, but it's also a little bit different because we have uh, basketball still around as we're heading into June and we're just in the first uh, round of the playoffs so uh, I'd love to meet some new Vipers and uh, get you guys acclimated and if you guys are new to MLB be sure be welcomed uh, to ask questions jump in a voice chat with me uh, and I'll try to uh, maybe give some strategy pointers as best I can. Main event tonight, Mariners at the Athletics. Uh, you say Kikuchi. I say Kikuchi because that's how you pronounce it. Up against Frankie Montes. We got an implied run total of 3.6 for the Mariners, 4.5 for the Athletics. Uh, another game that projects better for the pitcher than the hitters. Kikuchi, 8.3K on DraftKings, 8.9 on FanDuel, 13.7% swing and strike rate. His advanced metrics say he's been getting a little unlucky, a 4.32 ERA, but a 3.73 Sierra, 3.4 uh, XFIP, great ground ball rate, 1.1 whip. That's fine. We can work with um, on a normal slate. He's usually underpriced, and I go out there and I roster him up. On this slate, I think he's just like an average play. Um, going against the Athletics team, we do have some bats in this lineup that uh, are menacing against lefties. And then uh, Frankie Monta, 6.2K on DraftKings. If this was like a big slate with like cores, this would definitely be something that suckers me in, right? Mariners allow a pair of no-hitters so far and have just been really, really bad. And Monta's at 6.2K. I could live with 15-plus on a normal slate. Today, I need the 20-plus, but I do think it's very viable. 98 pitches in his last outing, has thrown 90-plus in his last two since um, the 14th. 
Um, so I definitely think he's, he's, he's very viable. So far this season, 11.2% swing and strike rate. In line where he's been the last three uh, last two seasons. XFIP and Sierra, not what you want. Um, but again, the, the manner is not, not something that's going to uh, put, strike a lot of fear in me. I think we're going to start. I think I do think Jared Kelnick is uh, better than these numbers, obviously. I think he's a, you know he's the top five. Uh, prospect in all of baseball, so I'm looking for that to turn around. Uh, but outside of that, I mean, this Mariners team still going to be really, really strikeout heavy. Kyle Lewis, 30% strikeout right against righties. Jacob Nottingham, Tom Murphy, Sam Haggerty, Donovan Walton. I mean, these. First of all, what are these names? Secondly, 30 plus percent K rates to uh, to uh, righties. So this is a matchup where Frankie Montes can easily outperform the salary. Maybe he's an easier path to a full on slot of White Sox bats or or, or whatever the uh, the stack like I, Twins and White Sox so far seem like they're going to be my highest on stacks. So maybe that's the easier access to get to like the 6K Nelson Cruz price tag. Um, and then the White Sox we're dealing with a what a 4.9 on Mercedes. That's high price for a catcher. Tim Anderson. 5.9k he hasn't shown a lot of power against lefty so far this season but we kind of expect that to turn around so maybe a 6.2k montes allows us to do that but like i said it's just one of those days where offenses don't project great so if the median range outcome for montes is 20 or less then i don't think he's like a must by any stretch right uh but i do think there's a there's a lot of value to be assumed at that price point 8.4k on Fandle, looking for six innings and a win definitely think that's viable against the mariners going to be uh the most pitcher friendly park on the slate uh, and the environment should be fine too. Sub 60 degree temperatures projected right now. So uh, no reason to expect a shootout here. And um, I think all the pitchers are fine. They're literally, I don't think there's, okay, so maybe like Sam Henkes and uh, even Austin Gomber is like justifiable. Like every pitcher is justifiable on this slate. And that's usually not the case. Usually these, these, uh, these short travel days just have a, ugly you know openers and and day five starters but i think today uh even without like aces like this this is definitely projecting more of a pitcher slate than than a hitter slate so might even see some lineups that don't involve a full onslaught stack creep up to the top uh two twos three twos uh stuff like that so uh anyway that's the the first look at this slate if you guys enjoyed it show some love hit that thumbs up leave a comment below if you're on twitter twitter.com slash gundacker hit me with the follow and uh shoot me some questions dms are open uh otherwise man i appreciate you guys hanging out with me making a little bit of my time uh a little bit of your time and uh, i hope you crush it tonight good luck god bless and go win some money